Ah, oh, yes, greetings and salutations. I've been asked this question a lot recently, talking about what is a BSI sensor, which we have here on the right. We have on the right a BSI CMOS, or backside illuminated, which sounds kind of ridiculous. Backside illuminated kind of sounds like when you get a, a rectal exam from your doctor and he sticks a flashlight up your butt. It's uh, not actually illuminated from the backside, but uh, let's actually define what a BSI sensor is. And on the left, we have a conventional CMOS, as we typically find in countless cameras, D500 to DA10. On the right, we have backside illuminated sensor. For example, the new X-T3, which supposedly is a Samsung sensor used in the NX1, and also, too, in the D850, and those uh, horrible... How about the new horrible Nikon Z7 camera? Um, what's really important is right down here. Let's talk about that in a second. So let's look at a conventional CMOS. Okay. By the way, these uh, colored things here in blue, red, and green is the CFA. This stands for Color Filter Array, whether that be X-Trans or Bare. They are exactly no less than a filter. What they do, obviously, is uh, filter the light to uh, feed to the uh, the uh, phase detection uh, what frequency of light is actually hitting the sensor. Obviously, if you remove this uh, uh, over top of uh, your sensor, then what you have is a true monochrome. What actually cuts down on, if you actually remove this, so before you get the BSI, what it actually cuts down on is uh, native SNR by being present, but since most people actually like to take color photographs instead of just black and white ones, unless you want a true monochrome, which we, at least I do and a lot of you actually do, um, you actually need that, but it actually cuts down. Imagine, like, if every lens you had had a filter permanently glued on the end of it, right? It would actually cut down on uh, on uh, gain and fidelity of the shot that you were taking, because any filter cuts down on the light, right? Well, every sensor out there, unless it's a true monochrome camera, of which there are only a couple, Leica has one and Phase One has one, which I believe is fifty thousand dollars, roughly thereabout. Anyway, that's the color filter array, and uh, what we actually have here, if you notice, very interesting, in a conventional CMOS, we have the PD or photodiode substrate. It's this right here. However many millions of megapixels of them there are. You notice that on the BSI sensor, it's located right here, and on the conventional CMOS, it's located way the hell down here. What we have here on the top on both are micro lens. There's like, I think there's like 50 different patents on micro lens design. There's gapless, and then there's arrays of different size, and it's actually is a variegated, far more variegated even than the color filter where we have X-trans and of course regular bear. So these are just no different than like magnifying glasses, which are actually of course, logically so, concentrating the light to the PD. Okay, and that's on both. The photodiode substrate, which is located here on the conventional, and it is of course located right here on the BSI sensor. Now you notice here is way down here, and on the BSI sensor, it's located right up there. Over here on the left, interestingly enough, we actually have an aluminum wiring harness or layered array between the lenses and the photodiode substrate. Interestingly enough, the gap between mia and hia is a lot more than it is between mia and mia. Right? Interesting. Lens and photodiode substrate here and here versus here and here. So when light comes in, if it doesn't take a direct path, which it never really does, I mean light barely ever comes in like this, it'll come in like this, like, oh my goodness, what these black things are on both is a wiring harness. Interestingly enough too, this is aluminum on a conventional, most of the CMOS, AL for aluminum, and over here it's a copper, which has a much faster read speed. Copper works better than aluminum. Copper is down here, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the conventional CMOS and then we're going to understand something really important why I say BSI sensor is better because it has better native uh, SNR. By the way, let's stick up this nasty little word up here, ISO.
Okay, and let's talk about that in a second. So if the light comes in at this angle, yeah, and it strikes the aluminum wiring harness, then it doesn't ever make its way down to the photodiode substrate, which is located at the bottom of the well down here on a conventional sensor, which is going the way of the dinosaurs. These will be gone, I don't know how many years, but they'll definitely be gone. Okay, so unless it comes in directly like that and hits the photodiode substrate, yeah. But of course, we also have an issue here is we have SNR loss, SNR, signal to noise ratio loss between here and here versus here and here on a BSI sensor. Okay, you kind of see the difference between here and here and here and here. Huge difference, right? So light comes in at these various angles like this. Okay, so this light is lost. This light is lost because it's hit the wiring harness. I think you get that, right? It's kind of like if you drop a penny down the well. If it's a deep well, it's going to like be bouncing off the sides of the well. Well, light is not like a penny. In the case of light, when it hits the side of the, uh, the well on the way down, it gets lost forever. It never makes its way to the bottom of the well. And this is where the BSI sensor has ha 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 better native SNR, signal to noise ratio. Because very, very importantly, this is a hardcore fact, okay? Everybody needs to embrace this in digital photography. Guess what? ISO has no connection to exposure. It does not. It does not. There's three branches of exposure. There's uh, time and gain and SNR. These are the three branches of exposure in digital photography. Time, of course, shutter speed. Gain, of course, is aperture. And SNR is a signal to noise ratio. Right, right, right. Native SNR is insanely important. Okay? ISO is applied gain after the image has been taken. After, okay, that means past tense. After the image is uh, captured, after the AD converters, we actually have applied gain. That's why on professional radios, there's two knobs. There's one called, here we go, volume, which is output. Sure do is amplifying the output. And then we have a gain knob on professional radios, and that's input, input amplification, or an input amp. Gain knob, okay, and a volume knob, all right? Input amplification is ISO, right? Most people don't know that. Output, yeah, right. Anyway, so native SNR is incredibly important. What we have over here, since the uh, photodiode substrate is right next to the micro lens array, okay, the photodiode substrate is right here, and we have a copper wiring harness, an array right down here at the bottom where it doesn't interfere between the light. So if the light comes in like this, like this, like this, 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 this. Interesting enough, basically all of it hits the uh, photodiode substrate, which means the native SNR signal to noise ratio. This is really important. There's not another single YouTube channel that will talk about this. Native SNR is insanely important, right? This is also why, listen closely, listen closely, and this will be in the future. I think actually Phase 1's new monochrome is a BSI monochrome. What they've done, and if you've ever seen the picture, of course it's a $50,000 camera. What they've done is they've removed these nasty filters right here, the red, green, blue, and there's nothing. There's just a micro lens. Okay, and... The uh, photodiode substrate right here, okay, it doesn't filter the light at all, whatever, boom, monochrome, monochrome. Oh, the native SNR is off the hook. It's like a hot Playboy model with, <laughs> I, I think you get my point, right? Native SNR is everything because ISO is not connected to exposure in digital photography. Here's something else. There's no difference between digital photography and radio, since it's all electromagnetic radiation. There's the same difference, and most of you probably don't know this. A few of you will know this. There's a difference between like a quarter wave, an eighth wave, and half wave, and full wavelength antenna. I don't know if you people... Here's like a Yagi. This would be... This is a 440 megahertz Yagi. This is a quarter wave. Okay? And we're going to... Make this one like this. 
It says the 440 megahertz Yagi. This is an antenna. You actually point it in the right direction. This, both of these are 440 megahertz. The difference is that this one is half wavelength, right? If we made a really huge one way over here, this would be a full wavelength, one to one or one. All right, which one has a better native SNR? In other words, when you point it at the transmission source, Yagi's are directional, by the way, you have one quarter wavelength to 440 megahertz, one half wavelength to 440 megahertz, and then a full wavelength at 440 megahertz. Yeah, this would be like a conventional CMOS, right? Conventional CMOS, conventional, conventional, and this would be like a BSI CMOS. BSI CMOS. Exact same analogy. Um, I guess this is too over the top for most people when you talk about uh, field theory and uh, wavelength analogies. Um, I have to be more into field theory. I think a lot of people are not going to get it. This is also the same reason why government and Radio of Moscow and Voice of America would have these thousand acre fields that had full wavelength in the uh, low megahertz range. There'd just be huge fields of arrays with miles of antenna and uh, they could actually transmit out not that much power, be a half wavelength or full wavelength, that huge wavelength uh, lower radio frequency to transmit around the world like propaganda from Radio Moscow or Voice of America. The English still do this, South Africa does it, South America. Anyway, everything is this, importantly, SNR. Whoops, <laughs> I put SR, SNR. I'm always thinking five steps ahead, so I'm always making typos. This isn't a typo, it's a handwriting typo. Signal to noise ratio, okay? Gain and time, or aperture and shutter speed, plus native SNR on the sensor equals exposure. Also improves dynamic range. So, there we go. Here's a short and sweet answer of what a BSI sensor is. Hope you liked this video. If you didn't, you could voice your displeasure. Tell me how much I suck. Or, you know, something like that. But uh, there's no other peckerhead on YouTube making videos like this. Kind of, I think this is pretty simple. I think I hit the nail on the head in a very short... I have no hair, so that's definitely not me. I do have freckles, though. Thank you so much for watching, and adios. Girlfriend.